Hello, this is a teacher video to provide guidance on how you might support students in modifying their code for the investigation in Lesson 12. In this investigation, students will have a sound maker and a sound receiver. One will go inside a box with some different materials that they're testing. The other will go outside the box. It is probably more straightforward to code the sound maker to be in the box and untouched during the investigation while the sound receiver is outside. However, if students choose a different path, they can try to pursue that and see what they figure out. The goal of this video is to not show it directly to students, but to provide guidance to the teacher on how they could kind of guide students toward productive solutions using the resources at their disposal. Those resources for the sound maker are two pieces of code from lesson seven, program X and program Y. We'll look at program X because it's more straightforward. And then we'll take a look at the sound receiver code and potentially modifying that. As in lesson seven, one of the key things students might want to change about the sound maker code is putting it on a delay. The two main possibilities for how they could do that, although certainly not the only possibilities, would be to take a pause block and put it here right after button A is pressed. Or alternatively, they could change the number of repeats of the symbol on screen before the sound starts. When students make those changes, they may make mistakes. For example, that pause block may go in the wrong spot and then it doesn't work. Those are some of the types of things we, we want them to productively engage with and struggle through, is thinking about the effects of putting that block in different places. Or for example, changing the, the number of repeats in the wrong place and not seeing the desired effect. The other thing students are likely to want to change here for their investigation is to change the notes that are being played. They probably want it to automatically play different notes without touching it. Currently, it just plays one tone 10 times. However, that does not have to be the case. This code could be easily modified to make it make different sounds. And when we reason through that with students, perhaps one of the more productive ways to do that would be to help them think about their process first. What do they want it to do? Well, if I'm a student, I want it to play a note 10 times, and I want to play a different note 10 times. And if I map that out in pseudocode, I make a nice little flow chart, I can see that those things happen back to back, and basically I want the same thing to happen again. So we can use that to help students realize they could just copy this code and put it down here. And if they change the note that's being played between those two, those two repeats, we'll get two different notes repeating each 10 times before the other one plays. Now, to actually change the ringtone, currently, if you see, there's a variable here, frequency of note, which is dictated all the way up here. Since we want different notes, that may not be super useful. So it might be easier to make that go away and then just change the frequency in here. There are other possible solutions students could take. For example, they could put some code in here to make the frequency go up by 10 on every repeat. This is probably the easiest solution, though, to just change it like that. Alternatively, students may want to change the volume which currently is also set up here at 255, but it does not have to be. I'm cutting that using Control X, and then I use Control V to paste it elsewhere. And what we could do is we could say the volume is 255 for this repeat. I'm going to copy it with Control C. And then for this before the second repeat, I'll lower the volume to 100. And so it's going to start at a loud volume, play the note 10 times, and then it will reduce the volume and play the same note 10 times, but at that lower volume. There's all sorts of variations students could make on this, give them room to explore. And once again, do your best to support them in actually doing the sense making themselves around what goes in their code. Even if after they've exhausted options, you might provide some additional pointers. However, they've seen lots of prior code to this, so that should be important resources for deciding what to do here. When we go to the sound receiver code, we want this probably to show us the data 
on screen and maybe in different ways. It's currently written to give students the numbers on the computer using the USB port. However, they have seen numerous other tools to help them represent the data and see it. For example, show number under that basic menu. We want to show the sound level on the micro bit itself. We just put sound level in there and it will scroll. If we want a graph on the micro bit, we could go to LED and then plot bar graph of our sound level up to, and the top number was 255. So we'll say 255. Alternatively, maybe we want the graph to show up on the computer, like a line graph. That is serial write values, or sorry, numbers. And so you have to go down here to advanced, pick serial. And so serial write numbers, and we want the sound level. We don't need anything else, so we can click that minus. That will give us the graph on the computer. Or maybe we want the data reported on the micro bit to pull onto the computer later using a CSV file, like in lesson four. That's under data logger. If you don't see that here, you need to go to extensions, and typically it's the one in the top left, but you can search for it too. And then you just add it from there. Then once the data logger is installed, log data, and we'll just say that's the sound, and the value we want is the sound level. So there's a lot of opportunities here. Have fun supporting students in being a little bit creative while they pursue this investigation. Thank you for watching and enjoy.